damage. Anyway, this area here, as I say, about the size of two tennis courts, this is being developed as a wild flower meadow with widely spaced peri pear trees. Um, there are lots of interesting things going on. Now, I can name perhaps uh, no more than eight or ten of the plants here, but there are a lot more than that. There's some uh, dock here are numerous um, wild grasses. There is um, uh, elder, uh, elderflower. Here's some, an oak a sapling that's come up by itself. And uh, this is largely that's some sort of um, what's that? I can't remember the name of that. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Um, bit of uh, oh, I know what that is. I can't remember. Oh dear. Oh. oh okay. Cat gave me a fright. <laughs> that cat kills a lot of uh, birds around here. Um, uh, oxide daisies, various uh, different grasses. Let me slow it down. The last time I saw a snake here was actually in this um, section of the orchard. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of stuff here we don't particularly want, like um, brambles. I don't use any. Um, pesticide here, well almost none. I only will occasionally use a tiny little bit uh, to clear around the uh, fruits that we've got growing. Uh, lots of interesting things. Also, just something moved down there. I think it's a big grasshopper or uh, maybe a, a small mammal. I'm not sure, but the last time I saw a snake on the holding it was around here. Yes, yeah, so what I do is I come around and uh, use the scythe to cut back you gave me a fright there, cat. Mm. Um, uh, I, I, I come in with the scythe basically to get rid of the um, uh, the brambles, as the brambles will take over and destroy everything if they can. Uh, we're still clearing this, there's still a lot of odds and ends that don't uh, belong to the final plan. Uh, we've got a lot of wild um, plants here which have just come up by themselves from uh, they're naturally occurring seeds, um, but I also um, scattered uh, uh, 500 grams or so of um, rather expensive uh, wildflower uh, meadow uh, seed from the Cotswold Seed Company. And um, what the eventual plan is here, that we're going to have a, a wildflower meadow uh, with all of these curious, interesting um, plants and the insects that um, survive on them uh, with widely spaced peri pear trees and this is a peri pear it's planted on um, it's grafted onto a seedling pear rootstock and these can grow to 60 feet tall and live for 300 years and uh, it's growing quite nicely and that's uh, that's my head height here so this is about seven and a bit foot and uh, that's the growth that's been made this year it's about a foot of growth there, good at 20 centimetres. It's quite a young tree. This is a variety called Brandy. Well, I've got two of these. The other one is just over there. As I said, there's a few because this place is in transition. Um, we've got a few um, odds and ends of stuff that were planted down here before we'd made our mind up what to do. This is a golden hornet um, apple uh, tree. Um, I'm going to leave it until it gets in the way and then cut it down. It'll be too big to move, but yeah, which is no issue. I'll go to one anyway. There's the hedgerow there, and there's a lot of um, a slow uh, black form which has grown out from the hedgerow. And we're slowly cutting this back and um, burning it, and then eventually the, um, all the wild plants from here will seed into there. Uh, this would be a great place to bring um, some people on the botany field trip. Incidentally, the Prince of Wales, um, recently Prince Charles, the heir to the throne, um, he, um, uh, um, in honour of um, actually the Queen's uh, 60th anniversary of coronation, he has um, uh, set up some sort of wildflower meadow. I think the idea is to have a, in every county of the kingdom or queendom or whatever, wherever. Um, uh, he's uh, setting up wildflower meadows which will be able to distribute uh, mixed native uh, wild um, meadow flowers uh, in order, to, uh, the seed that is, in order to um, 
to try and establish more wildflower meadows uh, throughout the country. So anyway, so this is our little wildflower meadow and I don't know how many species of plant there are here but I'd be surprised if there were less than 40. Um, and here's another Harry Pear. This is planted a little bit older. That's my head height there. So this is at 7, 8, 9, it's about 10 feet and this has made a sturdy I think 14 inches, so you can't really see from here. Um, I think it's a sturdy 14 inches of new growth um, on that. Uh, it's growing nicely. No fruit yet, uh, but uh, it, it'll come, we hope. Um, I'm even hoping that uh, uh, I may get the first taste of perry from this uh, uh, during my lifetime. Well, I won't be able to get it after, will I? Um, that's another, I'm just going to walk back a bit from here so that we can, um, again, I don't know what this plant is, it's wonderful isn't it? All these wonderful um, wildflower meadows, which um, the loss of which is a very great loss. Um, obviously there's a lot of nettle here, you don't mind a bit of nettle, um, in fact it's good to have a little bit of nettle, but you don't want to let it take over. There's some fennel there, which, uh, there's a lot of, on a very really sunny day, okay it's June, but it's late June, but it's, uh, well it's been a bit strange this year. Um, that you do uh, see quite a lot of insects here. And I'm no entomologist, I've just seen a very curious looking um, fly, which I've no idea what it is. Anyway, there's the uh, that's the tree I was just looking at. That's a, a peripear variety called Winnell's Longdon, one of the more widely planted peripears. Uh, they grow for years before they fruit anything. And there's um, another um, peripear, that is Blakeney Red, which is the most widely grown peripear. Um, in England. Uh, so I've got just four peri pears here. Uh, they're hard to come by and, and, and difficult to, uh, expensive, but I want them particularly to be on the um, seedling pear um, root stocks so that they will grow very large, very tall. It'll be a few years before they start to crop, but then they should go on cropping for a hundred years. Uh, so there's going to be a, in this area about the size of two tennis courts. It's going to be about eight Peri pears, hopefully very tall, and um, hopefully um, uh, yielding a very significant amount of um, peri pears for peri each year. You, you can make um, peri. You can make what pear cider is a term that's used. It shouldn't be. You know, it shouldn't be pear cider. Um, but there is a you know sort of sort of drink very similar to Magna's cider, made from. Um, uh, mainly water, sugar, flavouring and a bit of um, pear um, juice. But proper perry is made uh, analogous to cider, it's made from more or less 100% um, 100% um, juice from suitable pear varieties and not every pear variety is suitable. Anyway, so this is how the uh, peace orchard is developing. It's a work in progress. Um, uh, it's changing every year. How are we going to manage um, the, uh, the, the, all of these gra uh, plants? You can't just leave them. Uh, you have actually got to sow, cut them down. So the idea is that we will um, let them flower and then come through here with a scythe and um, cut them all down and leave the hay, leave them, uh, leave the seeds. And um, yeah, I've got, I've bought in, sorry, to, to, go, to go back and uh, connect the story up properly. I've got, uh, about five um, peri, uh, pe uh, seedling pear rootstocks, which I'm going to graft with different varieties. I haven't quite decided which peri pear varieties I'm going to add to the collection. I'll probably um, multiply up the, by grafting the, um, uh, the two I've got, or three I've got. I've got two brandy and I've got one each of Winnells Longdon and Blakeney Red. So I'll probably multiply those up. Um, I have in the um, coppice at the far end of the holding here, um, uh, planted in the middle of um, a, a little woodland and too big to move now. I've got a, one variety called Butt. Um, I'm also thinking about getting one called um, Tumper if I can. Uh, there's another called um, Barland, which I think I want to get. But what we are hoping to do is see if we can find the time for a, um, uh, a journey uh, along the Three Counties area. Um, that's uh, you know around the edges of Gloucestershire, um, 
and Hereford, which is a good place to go. Gloucestershire in particular is famous for um, Perry. And so we'll um, do a bit of research. But I've, meanwhile, I've got the, I've got the, uh, the root stocks I'm going to graft onto. I've got them down here and they're getting bigger. I better shut up here because I'm rambling on a little bit, but I just wanted to uh, let people have a look and see how this um, uh, wildflower um, meadow was progressing um, with all of these um, fascinating uh, uh, plants which eventually are going to constitute a, uh, a meadow uh, in which um, in the old-fashioned way we'll have um, widely spaced very large low maintenance peri pear trees which hopefully uh, should um, last for a hundred years or more.